Hello students, welcome to the second lecture of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. In this second lecture, we will cover the introduction to metamaterials and metasurface. So the lecture outline is shown here. We'll discuss why metamaterials, what are metamaterials, history of metamaterials, then the classifications, then we'll introduce metasurfaces, history of metasurfaces, and we'll discuss some applications of metamaterials and also if time permits, we'll cover some applications of metasurfaces. So this picture shows some typical example of metamaterials and metasurfaces. Why we are studying metamaterials? If you recollect uh, from the first lecture, we have discussed the technological evolution. We've seen that electronics have done extremely well towards miniaturization of the device dimensions and it can bring down the critical device dimension below 10 nanometer and that is perfectly fine that is why the electronic devices are becoming compact and lightweight day by day but there is a problem with the speed the maximum speed electronic circuits can go up to is restricted till gigahertz because of the rc delay related issues with electronics dielectric photonics have very well you know can break this speed barrier and bring terahertz um, speed on the bench but then there are problems with dielectric photonics uh, towards the miniaturization of the circuit and that is a fundamental limit called diffraction limit of light so that restricts the photonic circuits to be miniaturized beyond or below uh, micrometer scale and that is where plasmonics actually came into the picture where Plasmonics is a perfect blend of both the electronics and photonics world. And plasmonics is nothing but a branch of nanophotonics that we have discussed. So nanophotonics is basically the study of the behavior of light in the nanometer scale. It is the interaction of nanoscale objects with light. In short, nanophotonics is basically the light-matter interaction at the nanoscale. Now with the advancements in material engineering and also in the nanofabrication techniques, the performance of the nanoscale devices are improving day by day. So researchers across the world are keen in exploring new material properties to bring in new features on the batch. So that is what has asked or tempted people to look for different kinds of combinations of materials. So if you look for modern material engineering, they actually um, believe in different chemical matters which are made of either pure substances such as pure elements or compounds which are like two or different kind of atoms or different mixtures such as alloys which are mixtures of uh, metals, solid mixtures of metals solutions which are basically uh, liquid mixtures of compounds and blends and composites which are solid mixtures of different kind of compounds. So all in all there are like these are different permutation and combination of natural materials which are available right and why people have explored all this they want to get you know some desired electromagnetic properties from those compounds and that will help them to achieve some you know exotic applications now nanoscale devices made up of all these kind of uh, compounds that we see here they, they basically exhibit a, a combination of the electromagnetic properties or we can say these are like modified okay electromagnetic properties of their constituent materials so the chemical composition of the material plays an important role and in doing so the main bottleneck or I, I would say the limiting factor becomes that the set of limited number of materials available to play with so if you look into the periodic table which you have seen in your school days out of this only certain number of materials and their compounds or composites have properties or electromagnetic properties in that particular frequency range of interest so the set is very limited okay not more than you know 500 or 600 combinations you can try so and one material 
can be good at something not good at another thing and so on so property wise they have there are restrictions and that you cannot overcome so that is what has actually tempted people to look into meta materials now what are meta materials these are like materials we can create on our own we can design okay and their properties are independent of their chemical constituents so that gives us you know a lot of opportunity so this is what is interesting in meta materials that the electromagnetic properties are not dependent on its constituent atoms or molecules but they are dependent on the physical layout of the constituent atoms so the physical design defines the property of the material so if you break the name meta material in two parts meta and material so they have basically come from a greek word meta which means beyond or later or after and material means materia means material so it's like beyond materials beyond natural materials that's meta materials so in short we can say that meta materials constitutes of meta atoms which are basically artificial atoms or engineered unit cells just like the figure shown here natural materials are made of atoms meta materials are made of meta atoms and you can actually decide what should be the design of this meta atoms so nature builds materials using atoms engineers can build meta materials using metallic semiconductor or insulating nanostructures as meta atoms okay so meta materials gain their properties not as much as their from their raw materials composition but mainly from their sub wavelength sized individual elements which are meta atoms okay and this meta atoms they can resonantly couple to both electric and magnetic components of the incident electromagnetic field and that is how they are able to bring out some extraordinary you know properties electromagnetic properties which are not found in natural materials so this is a schematic that shows a 3d meta material and each of these elements the building block as you can see which is periodically repeated in three dimension so each of this building block is having a electric response as well as a magnetic response and what is the important thing here is the size of this meta material is much much smaller than the wavelength of the light that or the electromagnetic wave they are interacting with so that makes them meta material okay so let us once one more time because we understood the properties and of a meta materials are derived from meta atoms so meta atoms become the most important part so what are these meta atoms made of they are made of the conventional materials such as metal and dielectric which we find in nature that is fine but then like this you know you have the atoms in from the periodic table you bring them to make your meta atom but the design of meta atom is done in such a way that their assembly which is the meta material can bring out some extraordinary properties which are not seen in natural materials and that is how you know you can go from atoms to meta materials so remember that these meta atoms are sub wavelength in size scale they are much smaller than the conventional optical elements such as lenses and prisms and the precise shape geometry size orientation and arrangement of these meta atoms or nanostructures you, you can call them as nanostructures as well they basically affect the electromagnetic properties of light and give out some unusual and exotic responses so how many possibilities now we have how many um, constituent meta atoms you can think of 500 1000 1, 1 lakh it's infinite so you can design using like the normal materials you can design any shape any structure any nanostructure okay that can actually work as a meta atom so you can think of almost infinite possibilities of nanostructures of meta meta atoms that can be designed so that many meta materials can be designed in practice so here are some examples of meta materials where you can see 
this one uses a square shape uh, double uh, split ring resonators as its meta atom which is periodically repeated and this one uses a uh, circular shape uh, double split ring resonators as it meta atoms so each of these will have different properties different scale depending on the frequency range they are supposed to work on frequency range or wavelength scale or uh, they are supposed to work on and this meta material concept is same for all the domains so starting from microwave domain to optical domain okay so you can design meta materials without deviating from their electromagnetic properties so one more time the properties of meta materials are derived from their meta atoms so whatever you will design that design will decide the electromagnetic properties not the constituent atoms in that design okay because that design say you want to make this kind of split ring now you if you are make, making it based on copper so it doesn't mean that you know the properties of copper will actually play a major role here no the major role will be decided by this circular split rings okay but then if you change the material from copper to some other material say gold or silver there will be slight variation that is why i mentioned that the property of the metal material depends mainly on the physical structure not as much on the constituent material there will be slight deviation if you change this ring from one material to another but mainly the property that you are seeing of this meta material is coming from this double circular split ring kind of structure okay so this is the history of the meta materials so it dates back to 1968 when russian scientist veselago uh, did the first study of the effect of negative permittivity and permeability on wave propagation okay and this was followed by sir john penry in 1996 where he proposed first the wire structures that could realize a negative permittivity so that was kind of artificial material structure where the material structure is deciding the negative permittivity then 3 years later in 1999 Professor Penry again designed split ring resonator based structure to realize negative permeability. Now, when you have negative permittivity and negative permeability, both are negative, you can actually develop materials which have negative refractive index. Now, how these are related? Refractive index n is square root of mu and epsilon. okay so when both mu and epsilon are negative you will have negative refractive index so the first experimental demonstration was done by david smith's group and they were able to make meta materials with negative refractive index so 1995 to 2015 was a golden era or the first revolutionary phase for meta materials and modern meta materials new physics all these things meta material physics were introduced in 2005 david smith brought in the second revolution in this meta material field by realizing gradient refractive index medium so the refractive index is now changing with space so there is a gradient and that al allowed him to band electromagnetic waves so any gradient in the material would allow you to band the waves so bending can actually help you explore many new interesting applications in 2006 proposition of an optical transformation to control the propagation wave using meta material was uh, proposed and demonstrated by uh, shurij dr shurij so till date things were done mainly in uh, rf and microwave domain and then it entered the optical domain in 2010 dr yang actually introduced meta materials to acoustic field or acoustic domain where acoustic meta materials and meta surfaces were achieved in 2015 dynamic meta materials space time science and technology and chemical imaging analysis were introduced by professor fan in 2019 broadband plasma excitation and signal in terahertz were introduced so that actually brought uh, 2d metamaterial terahertz uh, metamaterial absorbers 
these things were demonstrated by Professor Liam. In 2020, microwave energy-based chiral metamaterials and tunnel resonators were demonstrated by Professor Kinderness and Lesher. And in 2021, thermal solar energy-based silicon core tungsten nanoware metamaterial and copper plasmonic nanostructure metamaterial were achieved. So as you can see, starting from 1968 to 2023, a lot has changed in this metamaterial field. From theory, from speculation to experimental demonstration, all these things have been possible over the years. Now, if you want to understand metamaterials more, we got to classify metamaterials. Okay, so the classification of metamaterial depend on the permittivity and permeability of a structure. Now, I hope all of you remember from your uh, school days what is permittivity and permeability. So briefly, permittivity is the property of the material that measures the opposition offered against formation of electric field. So it is given by this epsilon, Greek alphabet and it tells the number of charges required to generate one unit of uh, electric flux in a given medium and on the other hand permeability is related to magnetic field so it actually measures the ability of the material to allow formation of magnetic lines of force or you can say magnetic field within the material so it speaks about the ability of magnetization that uh, material possesses for any applied magnetic field. So once you understand that these are the two properties, now let us actually draw this axis and divide them into four quadrants. So this is the quadrant where, you know, both permittivity and permeability are positive. So these are called DPS materials. So double positive because both permittivity and epsilon and mu are positive. So, which materials fall in this category? The common transparent dielectrics can fall in this category. And if you do E cross H, you will see the wave propagation happening in this particular direction. Okay. So, this is the uh, propagation or the energy propagation for the wave that is possible for uh, double positive materials. Now, let's move on to this second quadrant where permittivity is negative and permeability is positive. So this is called epsilon negative or e ENG uh, material, epsilon negative material. So examples such as metal in optical uh, wavelength, they actually have negative permittivity. So what does it mean? Wave propagation is not possible. So light cannot actually enter a metal, it is reflected back. So it's only evanescent wave that propagates. And if you think of this quadrant, the fourth quadrant, where you can see the permittivity is positive, but permeability is negative. So this typically happens in magnetic plasma and it does not occur at the optical uh, wavelength. So you do not have any natural material over here. You can have natural material over here, which are the dielectric. You can have natural materials over here, like metal, but nothing in optical frequency comes to this region. And then comes the most interesting part of metamaterials, which is DNG, means double negative. That means permittivity and permeability both are negative. So in this case, you know, E cross H, when you do, you can see that the propagation, though the Pointing vector is in this direction, left to right, but the wave will propagate in the opposite direction. So that is the negative index materials. And initially, only this particular domain materials were called metamaterials. But now the definition of metamaterial is much more relaxed. And uh, whenever you are able to make any kind of artificial structure that can give you a property which is customizable or you can change everything at your will we can call it metamaterial so we can see here that this region as we discussed this are on natural material so we have shown a picture of nature okay here you can see you can actually have an array of uh, metallic rods and that can actually give you a customizable property 
negative permittivity but then that that property is customizable which depends on the size of this rod and the period of this rod array so that way you can actually also call this a meta material okay similarly you can have an array of uh, double splitting or double circular splitting resonators and they actually define the negative permeability okay so this is also not a natural material but using uh, this kind of structures you can obtain negative permeability so these things people have shown mostly in uh, microwave region because the size of the constituent materials like this and meta atoms they are easy to handle they are in uh, say millimeter or centimeter scale and when you combine these two together so this one has got negative permeability sorry permittivity and this one has got negative permeability and when you bring them together as you can see this is a metallic uh, array of metallic rods with the splitting resonators associated with each of these rods you can actually get a, a double negative material so let us focus on the meta material concept how it works what is the relationship of the structure or the meta atom with the wavelength of light or electromagnetic wavelength it is uh, interacting with now this is an illustration of the material material concept as you can see here okay so let's assume that a material is made out of some red dots like this now what are these dots these dots could be uh, little dielectric or metallic spheres or cylinders if you see them from the top view and even molecules and let's assume they are separated by a distance d now you are using some kind of electromagnetic wave to see this okay now depending on the wavelength of light and what is the relationship between this d and the wavelength of light lambda you will see a different picture if you assume that the wavelength is much smaller than the inclusions that is d in that case you will see each of these particular red dots that means the light will be able to see this as a collection of objects it means you will be able to see the atomic picture on the other hand if you take the other extreme where say the wavelength is much much longer than this uh, inter particle or inter atomic separation in that case the wave will not be able to resolve any of this internal structure and it will more or less effectively average out the property right so these are the two extremes so here you will see a homogeneous picture here you will see an atomic picture now what are these red dots so these red dots can represent you know say for a material it can represent um, the index of refraction or it can be something more technical something like the polarizability of a material and as you see that in this scale each of this can be individually seen but when the wavelength is much much larger things get averaged out okay now what happens in between here so this is the case where you know the spacing between the atoms that is d is basically of the order of the wavelength okay it's so comparable so when d is say you know comparable to lambda by 4 or lambda by 5 then you actually get a collection hmm, of the properties that is more or less averaged out so here you see these are red dots having some white spaces and slowly towards the wavelength when the wavelength is becoming very very large it is get, getting a uniform light red color so meta material somewhere concept comes from this so you are actually having some kind of property which is uh, decided by this individual red dots and also their spacing and you know depending on the you know the wavelength that is interacting with your material you will finally have the properties seen so if the interatomic spacing that is d is in the order of the wavelength of light the unit cells will start resonating 
So that is the concept of you know resonating metamaterial. That means each of these meta atoms will be a resonating structure. So whatever we have seen so far is more or less examples of resonating metamaterials. There are also concepts towards this range where individual meta atoms do not have much identity and in that case we can actually go for non-resonant metamaterials. Okay, we will come into those concepts when we go into metamaterials in more details. So more or less this is how the metamaterial concept has come into picture. So this is the range where you know resonating metamaterials actually play a vital role. Okay, so we have already seen this. So what are the applications? First of all, if you see any natural material, when light is falling from say vacuum or air into any conventional material, this is the path of light. Depending on the refractive index, this is slightly bent towards you know, the normal or slightly away from the normal, but more or less the path remains same. But in metamaterials, what happens? Assume that the light is coming from vacuum, but from the normal, instead of going to this side, it will bend on the opposite side. And this is what is the feature of you know negative refractive index metamaterial. So this allows you to manipulate the electromagnetic waves in a different way. So they will allow enhance or absorb or block or bend unconventionally. So that is what this field of metamaterial is all about. It can do a lot of unconventional things just like here. Okay. So this is the typical law of refraction that you have studied in your school days but this is something completely opposite to that. Okay. Good thing is that the designs of metamaterials are scalable with frequency. So when the frequency increases you just need to scale down your uh, meta atom size and it will work the design works and you, you can actually make it work over the entire em spectrum so that gives a amazing amazing flexibility that you can actually adapt a design of meta material from another field and make it work for you like you can take it from a macro wave field and take it to the optical field because the structure defines the main property not the constituent materials okay and as you see that you know negative refraction, sub wavelength imaging, all these interesting applications are possible with metamaterials. Other applications like perfect absorption, cloaking, etc. So when I say cloaking, what is cloaking? Cloaking means hiding an object. Okay, so it can only happen when you are able to bend the light, you know, around a particular object, so that when you see it from here, okay, you see as if the light rays are coming from the source undisturbed because you are actually getting the same kind of beam over here or oh, th sorry this is the light source so you can actually assume that you know the the detector over here is able to see the source undisturbed but light rays are actually getting bent around the object so this is the fundamental of cloaking in this case you are able to hide this particular object from getting detected now when you discuss about metamaterials there is also a possibility of metamaterials to be in 2d or two dimension so that we call as meta surface so in short you can say that meta surfaces are basically 2d counterparts of metamaterials as you can see here the meta atoms in case of meta surface are also 2d elements okay so it's basically a two dimension and analogy of meta materials and uh, meta surfaces have received a lot of attention over the recent times and you can actually control electromagnetic property of light interacting with this extremely thin layer and that that makes it very interesting because you are able to manipulate microwave and optical frequencies okay uh, using meta surface and if you compare metamaterials and meta surface, this is how they are different. Like a metamaterial lens will have a finite thickness, whereas a meta, meta surface lens will be very, very, very thin. 
So you can obviously think of the application areas where matter surface can actually beat the matter materials. So if you look into the matter surface uh, history, okay, it all dates back to 1902 when Robert Wood actually found some anomaly in the reflection spectra of metallic grating. And uh, this phenomena is called Wood's anomaly. And from that, um, there was another uh, phenomena called, um, identified by uh, Levi Civita, which is also known as Levi Civita relation. Okay. And that states that, you know, a sub wavelength thick uh, film can result in a dramatic change in electromagnetic boundary conditions. So, generally speaking, um, matter surfaces. Uh, could include uh, some traditional concepts in microwave domain such as uh, frequency selective surfaces, impedance sheets and even ohmic sheets. And in the microwave region, we have seen that the thickness of this matter surfaces uh, can be much smaller than the wavelength of operation. For example, 1000 times uh, of the 1000 times smaller than the wavelength they are interacting with because the skin depth can be extremely small for highly conductive surfaces okay so people have already demonstrated 0.3 nanometer thick film as matter surfaces which are actually able to absorb all electromagnetic waves uh, in rf microwave and uh, terahertz frequencies so that's amazing now if you think of uh, you know uh, optical applications and anti reflective coating could also be regarded as a very simple uh, matter surface as it was first observed by Lord Rayleigh. The discoveries of Wood and uh, Levi Civita promoted the development of the two areas which are long treated independent of each other. One research area of matter surface is about the surface plus bond uh, polariton which is uh, a particular solution of surface wave at uh, metal dielectric interface and the other one includes FSS, impedance sheet and uh, various other planar um, uh, antenna arrays. In optical domain, um, the two areas began to somehow you know, overlap with each other since uh, most of the metals in the uh, matter surfaces become plasmonic at this particular frequency range. So that is where you know in optic, optical field this matter material concept has boomed a lot. Indeed it will be uh, also shown that SPP and uh, ordinary electromagnetic waves in matter surfaces can be deduced to form a unified theory. So it is basically difficult to separate FSS and matter surface from the perspective of uh, electromagnetic interactions since both of them can be well described by effective medium theory, effective impedance and all these things although FSS is only intended to do some frequency dependent transmission and uh, uh, reflection. In 2000, there are many categories of applications that has come up, something like, you know, um, sub-wavelength optics, plasmonic uh, filters, modulators, uh, plasmonic components for near-field optics, um, then amplitude mod modulation devices, absorbers, anti-reflection coatings, phase shifters, the artificial wave plates, perfect absorbers, and all these things, antennas and many other electromagnetic devices. So the field of flat optics has also come up with the advent of this field of matter surfaces. Now, what are the main advantages? Unlike the three dimensional matter materials, matter surfaces can control the properties of electromagnetic waves within one infinitely thin uh, layer. So that actually provides a couple of advantages, something like they're very lightweight, they're easy to fabricate, low cost, and they have high degree of integration. Anything thin is easy to integrate. So, 
Matter surfaces can be as seen here, matter surfaces can be used in various applications due to their abilities to manipulate electromagnetic waves in microwave and optical frequencies. This artificial sheet of materials as you see here, they are basically composed of metallic patches in planar in, or in multi-layer configuration with sub-wavelength thickness and as I mentioned they have advantages of being lightweight ease of fabrication and they can control the wave propagation on both sides and the surrounding free space okay so all these properties allow you to achieve polarization modulation beam forming active controlling focusing generating holograms using matter surfaces so there are different exotic applications possible like super lenses which are able to focus in infinitely small volume, electromagnetic absorbers, polarization converters, biosensing and so on. So metamaterials can be actually fabricated in various sizes. So these are the concept of metamaterials and metasurfaces. I hope these are clear. Now let us actually look into some applications of metamaterials and then we'll conclude and we will try to cover the meta surface application in the next lecture. So metamaterials are fabricated in various sizes depending on the operating wavelength and their intended application. So here you can see in nanometer scale you can actually create metamaterials for optical clocking or you can actually create thermodiodes which are able to you know block heat in one particular direction and allow in another. In micrometer scale, you can think of you know gas separation membranes and terahertz absorber which operate in micrometer scale and they could manipulate um, molecules and high frequency terahertz waves. So these are the two scale nanometer micrometer scale. Even you can also find um, metamaterials in uh, millimeter scale, centimeter scale and even meter kilometer scale something like you know in millimeter scale you have oxytic stents and microstrip patches, patch antennas, they are constructed with the millimeter dimension to manipulate mechanical motion and electromagnetic waves. Now what is oxytic stent? These are basically structures made of materials, they have negative uh, Poisson ratio. So when they are stretched, they become thicker perpendicular to the applied force. Okay. And this occurs due to their particular internal uh, structure and the way they deforms when the sample is uniaxially loaded. And a stent here, as you can see, is basically a small uh, mesh tube typically used to hold uh, open passages in the body, such as weak or uh, narrowed arteries. You can also build uh, in centimeter scale, you can bring metamaterials that can provide soundproof wall and you can also have acoustic super lenses that can manipulate sound waves. So as you can understand like with the different um, scale you are actually looking also for different different domain of waves in the electromagnetic spectrum where metamaterials will be interacting. And finally you can also think of subsurface imaging and earthquake resistant infrastructure they can be constructed on meter to kilometer scale that can also manipulate seismic waves so more or less metamaterials can actually work on any kind of waves so the there has to be relationship between the metamaterials constituent blocks that is meta atoms and they should be comparable okay to the wave they are dealing with so metamaterials application as you can see it is not only electromagnetic metamaterials where the main applications would be electromagnetic cloaking, electromagnetic absorber or terahertz electromagnetic metamaterials. We can also have metamaterials in acoustic, thermal and mechanical field. In acoustic metamaterials we can think of acoustic cloak means you can actually do or you can actually make a region which is uh, where sound waves will not enter. You can actually make absorber and you can also make sound waves focus at a particular place that is a acoustic uh, focus. Similarly, you can have in thermal field, you can have thermal cloak, thermal emission and heat flux control. In mechanical, you can have minimum shear modulus, 
then you can have negative Poisson ratio materials and different energy applications. Okay, so if you talk about electromagnetic metamaterials, the main applications are in the telecom areas where you know metamaterials they exhibit uh, sub wavelength operation or phase man manipulation, and that makes it makes them very popular in application in communication systems. So the future and current 5G devices they demand high efficiency, high data rate, computational capabilities, cost effectiveness, compact size and low power consumption and all these things are possible with metamaterials. So metamaterials can revise the antenna design, the conventional style of designing antennas to support you know the new generation devices that will give them you know wide band, high gain and you know multi band operation. Also they will also bring in um, compact size, configuration or reconfigurability, then absorption and the ease of fabrication. Next uh, important application could be in the field of sub diffraction imaging. As you can see uh, in conventional lens the resolution is mostly limited by the refraction limit of light as we understood and it, it happens because in conventional optical system the evanescent waves which carry sub diffraction special information okay they they actually have a decaying amplitude so they decay okay but then if you actually have a metamaterial that can amplify your uh, evanescent field and control them that can actually help you image this particular information over a distance so there was a paper in 2005 they have shown this diffraction you know sub diffraction imaging is possible using metamaterials and all these things you can actually achieve <coughs> by choosing the building block properly next application would be in the field of sensing as you can understand that if you are able to focus um, electromagnetic waves in very very small volume you should also actually probe the trace amount of molecules which are present on that particular surface and when you think of metamaterials which are made of resonating elements and this resonance also depends on the surrounding materials so they can also be used for you know sensing the change in refractive index of a material so that can be used for sensing kind of applications another important application will be in cloaking as you can see here the waves are coming from this direction there is an object but then the waves actually bend around so this is a metamaterial cloak that is able to save this object from detection so what happens when light actually falls on an object typically the light is either absorbed okay so if it is absorbed and uh, nothing is getting detected here that means somehow you know that there is an object present okay in that case the object is not transparent okay so it is getting detected now if the light is getting reflected from the object then also you do not get anything here that means the object is now getting illuminated and you are able to see the object directly so again the object is not transparent so the object is not uh, transparent to the waves so how do you actually make it transparent or invisible or get it away from the detection the way is to bend the electromagnetic waves around it so that is possible by covering this this object with this metamaterial so this is the metamaterial that is allowing the light rays to bend around it and after it exit from the metamaterial they actually become in the same pattern they were before they entered this particular metamaterial area so that way the observer over here will think that there is nothing that is disturbing this electromagnetic wave and that way this object is undetectable so you can actually think of a lot of applications different kind of application based on this metamaterials okay so a true cloaking device will actually hide this object from you know detection for for 
light that is coming from any direction so that makes it more 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 challenging basically so you are just not working in one direction you have to design it in such a way that whichever is the direction of the uh, incident electromagnetic wave the wave should actually go around and then exit okay so that is how you can actually uh, develop a clock so novel meta materials we'll see in the subsequent lectures how to develop this kind of meta materials what are the properties how do you do mathematically and um, how do you actually come up with such a design similarly you can also think of meta materials in other fields like acoustic motor materials they allow control direct and manipulate sound waves or phonons you can say in gases liquids or solids so these are two real world example of acoustic meta materials so this is a periodic 3d crystal kind of thing this is called a sonic crystal so here one particular uh, range of sound frequencies cannot propagate in a certain direction so this is very much analogous to photonic crystal if you already know about it or else we'll discuss photonic crystal and then you will see that these are basically based on photonic crystal kind of uh, concept and this is called penta mode meta material which supports stress in only one of the six possible modes so, and it has uh, inspired many um, acoustic meta material design so these are different examples so they can be used as you know acoustic stealth cloak um, acoustic perfect transmission underwater sound absorption and so on similarly in the field of thermal there are meta materials which have unique capability of controlling heat transfer and heat transfer and thermodynamics are very important topic in today's world including power generation and conversion night vision microelectronics aerospace in and in other fields so thermal matter materials could help dissipate heat in a you know deterministic manner and it will allow you to guide heat in a particular path and avoid local hotspots in advanced nanoscale devices so when you go to nanoscale as we discussed in the first lecture heating is also a very important no issue that we have to take care of so there are a few examples of thermal meta materials one is thermal shield or camouflage so what does it do it protects an area from transient diffusive heat flow so that is what shield does it saves one area from getting exposed to heat there are thermal concentrators as the name suggests it can focus thermal flux on a very small area there are thermal inverters or thermal rotators which can help you to change the direction of thermal gradient in an area so here are the examples as you can see this particular one shows a thermal shield so anything put here will not have any effect on of temperature change outside so this is the shield here is the thermal concentrator which actually helps you to bring more thermal flux in the central region as shown here and this is one meta material which is uh, actually able to do the you know redistribution of the thermal gradient so this is thermal inverter you see the thermal flux is this way but inside it is in the opposite direction so this is a thermal inverter now if we go to mechanical domain in mechanical domain also uh, you know the meta materials can be of any um, length scale based on the geometry if you think of uh, micron scale okay so you can actually have 3d printed uh, microscopic lattices with a um, variety of special techniques which can give you ultra light or ultra stiff lattices like this or you can have materials with extreme characteristics like this one which is shown okay you can also look for millimeter or centimeter scale uh, meta materials with applications like directional stiffness or impact absorption okay you can think of even larger scale like meter scale or even beyond which can be used for protecting a structure uh, from earthquake so this kind of meta material can actually um, help you block a structure from um, seismic waves so this kind of uh, even uh, the oil rigs um, in the ocean they can actually have a kind of um, meta material structure that can shield them from the 
you know tsunami waves so that way you can actually think of any waves and you can think of a meta material that can guide that wave in a particular uh, direction so you can think of shield you can think of concentrator and all these different applications are possible all the all you need to remember is that the size of the meta atom should be comparable to the wavelength of the wave that you are dealing with so with that we will try to conclude here because uh, we are running short of time for this lecture to cover the applications of meta surfaces that we will cover in the next lecture but what i want to uh, stress here is that meta materials bring infinite possibilities of defining materials and that is where this has taken the material engineering in any field to the next level so meta materials field is also not only restricted to photonics engineering or nanophotonics but it has done wonders in all other fields as you can see here in thermal acoustic mechanical fields you can design amazing you know shock absorbers based on impact absorbers using uh, meta material concept and so on so this field is very very much researched in all different um, disciplines and it has got a very bright future but in this course we will mainly focus on you know optical metamaterials which have got applications in nanophotonics okay so we will stop here and we will cover the applications of meta surfaces and the overall overview of this field in the next lecture thank you any queries you can write to me at this email address mentioning the MOOC course on the subject line thank you Thank you.